Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lori. Thanks for joining us here at uh, the first webinar for ESL in adult ed this year. I'm just looking for my little document. So um, Richard has made us collaborative document, KWL. Um, in, if you're not familiar with them, this is something that they use more in primary education. Uh, it's to activate prior knowledge. So I thought it would be cool if we did it collaboratively and he put the link here. If you click the access button, um, what I'm asking if you want, of course it's optional, to fill out the first two columns, what you already know about C1 and what you want to know about C1. And how that works in primary education is the first column is to activate the prior knowledge. So typically you would use this as a teacher with your primary class at the beginning of a unit or module uh, to get them um, eliciting as a group what they already know about the subject. Uh, what I do with my class, I do this more informally. I do it verbally as opposed to, um, to writing. And if I do, if we do do it in written form, I, I will scribe for the student because often it's their second language and sometimes they struggle with writing. So to ease the burden, I just, I want to get their brains activated, so I don't want to make it more difficult with writing. So if you choose to do this in your class, I mean, you're welcome to adapt this however you want. And the second column, what they want to know, I reframe it more as what they would need to know. So whatever course that they're doing, we would, uh, you know, pick the end of course outcome that, that they want to achieve at the end of uh, their course. And then to consolidate learning at the end, so I thought at the end of this webinar, uh, we could fill in the last column about what you've learned, if if you've learned anything. So I already did mine, so uh, we can share later if we want. So um, today we're talking about C1, and the first thing I want to say is um, Ms. Manon Frenet from the Ministry wanted to join us today for the uh, first few minutes to hear your comments if you had any questions for her. Unfortunately, she couldn't, but she did ask me to let you know that she had planned on it, but uh, something had come up and uh, hopefully she can in the next webinar. Um, and in the next couple of pages, I will have the next webinar dates for you. So uh, here's the agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna jump into the announcements before we get into C1. Like I said, anytime you have comments, questions, please just interrupt. The last uh, bit of information that I'd like to share is there is a new uh, a new link for the exam feedback forms. If you recall, the last link, um, they weren't secure, so we were encouraged to not share specific information about exams, but in this one, it is secure. So please feel free to use it and uh, put specifics of information that you would like uh, for the ministry to know about. Okay, so for if I, I don't know if there's anybody new to these webinars, but uh, if there is, uh, last year, here's a list of what we did last year. Uh, they are all on, if you like go into Google and you type in uh, TIC Moodle, then you'll see a link to the uh, Apricor, or you can just go on this uh, this link here on the bottom. Um, those are the ones we did last year. So there, if, especially if there's uh, teachers or education consultants that are new to the ESL program, I did an orientation, kind of uh, like what kind of books you could buy if you wanted to use textbooks, uh, things like that. You know where to find program information, um, oral interactions, different models on. Um, uh, different school boards and how they how they facilitated those. Uh, some tips getting uh, your students to interact when they don't really want to talk in English and uh, learning strategies. Um, Lori, I interrupt you. I think a few questions. Sure. Since a couple of minutes. Oh, oh yes. um, sorry. Yeah, please interrupt Karin, me. Karin Belmar was asking, have you test tried this exam? Which exam? Sorry. The placement test. I've used it a few times on my students, but when I'm sure you understand when you write your own documents, it's clear in your head 
what the document is supposed to do. I would, so no, it hasn't been field tested. I'm looking for teachers to test it. If you would like to test it, I would be grateful. If you wanted to send your feedback, I would be even more grateful. I hope that answers your question. So no, it hasn't been field tested beyond myself. Okay, and uh, Sylvie Shampoo is asking, can we use either the exams from Connecting Doors or yours? I'm sorry, can you remind me exams from Connecting Doors? They're not exams. That's, uh, that's why I'm not really sure what, but I didn't know Connecting Doors produced exams. To, to, does anyone know? Pre-tests or, or um, we don't, we must not call them pre-tests anymore, but learning situations rather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sylvie, sorry, can you clarify your question? Um, there's some included with the teacher's kit. Oh, I don't think I knew about, I think I, I think I heard something about that. Janet, yeah, I, go ahead. I contacted Connecting Doors on their chat uh, session because I wanted to know if they're learning situations, learning evaluation situations, or if they're evaluations, like examinations. And they told me that they're examinations. That was the intention. It's marked on the document learning evaluation situation or something like that. Anyway, uh, they told me that they're intended to be exams. Um, I personally don't use them. I don't use them as exams and I don't use them as learning situations, but that was the intention. Now, since it's secondary three, I think you're referring to the secondary three ones, right? Um, you can use them as exams if you want, but if there's teachers using them as learning situations, then they might be available, accessible somewhere. So just a word of caution on that. No, uh, thanks for that, Janet. But to further ask about your question, um, um, can we use either the exam from Connecting Doors or yours? I'm, I'm just not sure for what placement test. Oh, okay, I think I understand. If I can rephrase your question, you would like to know when you receive new students, can you use a placement test or can you use a learning situation? Can you use the Connecting Doors exams? For those, the Connecting Doors exams that Janet talked about, um, I would say contact your education consultant to see what your center wants to do. If they were intended for exams, You, there might be a confidentiality thing. Um, there is each school board or each center, they like together as a as their own unit, they decide what they want to do to classify new students. So uh, it's really up to your center and your like your team of ESL teachers and education consultant and your director and assistant directors what they want to do. I hope that answered your question. Any other questions before I move on? And from Eric Chabot, uh, Lori, uh, mm -hmm. you would be willing to give it a try and give you feedback. So I think you have one guy to be grateful to. Yes, thank you. Hey, Eric, I think, I think I did something silly last year and I sent it to you and I sent you a version that was half finished and I'm just shaking my head going, oh, I can't believe I did that. This one is finished. So, uh, I promise you it's it's a full document, but thank you very much. Please use it. Let me know how it works. If it doesn't work, I, I'm immune to uh, constructive criticism. In fact, I, I thrive on it. Uh, to make it more interactive, I created a little quiz. If, if everyone wouldn't mind taking um, maybe two minutes. Um, so competency one, four key features, true or false. Question? Yes? Danielle? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm waving to a student. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Sure thing. The end goal of developing C1 is communicative, communicative competence, true or false. The oral communication process is made up of three, it's, sorry, that should be fake <coughs> stages. I was paraphrasing there. Uh, planning, using resources and reflecting. All key features of competency one are evaluated and giving a speech is a good example of competency one. Is everyone finished? Um, there's three key features of competency one. And yes, the end goal is 
communicative competence. So the key features, the engaging in oral action, which uh, you probably all knew, uh, construction of meaning, and um, the monitoring your own development as a communicator. Uh, this can all be found in the program of study. So the end goal, communicative competence, it's the learner's ability to use questions. Our, our program resembles um, the linguists, uh, Kano and Swain's uh, definition of communi communicative competence. So I put that as a reference at the end of this presentation. If you want to read more about it, they go in, uh, in quite a bit of detail. But our program is very reminiscent of it in terms of functional, linguistic, sociocultural, and strategic uh, aspects of language, which you can find on page four of the program. So let's see. Okay, um, so the three phases, planning, using uh, resources, and reflecting. Yes, that's true. This is at the back of the book in the appendices, page 227. They have a nice list of strategies uh, I imagine your students probably already use some of these strategies in their planning process uh, as they speak and then uh, in the reflection process. Um, but if ever you're looking for more ideas to add, uh, you know, that's a great little resource there at the back of the program, pages 227 to 228. And they have them for competency two and competency three as well. So. And that's my slide there. So, um, no, not all of the features of competency one are evaluated. Um, and if you look at your end of course outcomes, that's where they outline uh, precisely what is evaluated. So a lot of them are just um, for you to uh, incorporate in, the, uh, in your teaching uh, activities to help them develop the competency. Um, so, giving a speech is a good example of competency one. So I think everybody answered false on that one. Yeah. So here I've taken um, some examples of speaking activities from uh, CEFR, which is the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. It's the standard uh, proficiency scale used in foreign languages in Europe. It's Quite an interesting read if you have extra time. They have um, several documents that they've produced and they are competency-based or proficiency-based, uh, similar to our program. And so it, it, uh, it's enlightening to read um, what they, um, how they do their uh, foreign language program. Um, so I took some of their activities, uh, speaking activities. So a monologue that could be um, uh, any giving a telling a story, for example, or just describing something in uh, in detail, acting. But in acting, I mean um, the fact that you've uh, memorized lines only to be uh, articulated at a given point in time. A discussion, a transaction, debating, giving a speech, cooperating with one or more individuals uh, to achieve a goal planning with others, interview, exchanging information and conversation. So if you'd like to take a little a minute right now, maybe using that really neat check mark tool uh, to maybe put a check mark on which ones you would consider as an, an, an example of an interaction um, or not. Okay, looks great. Looks like everyone has a clear understanding of um, examples of interaction, of course, then the definition that I put on the bottom from CEFR in my PowerPoint was supposed to show up after the fact. So there was some advanced warning there, but um, uh, they describe it and our, our program in the C1 section describes it similarly such that the interaction is a reciprocal uh, exchange of ideas where the meaning or the, the communication is built between the participants. It's not something that just one participant could do on their own. And interaction involves the process of both speaking and listening at the same time, which involves uh, various other abilities, for example, planning, planning what you're going to say in response to what the other person has said, 
And uh, some of those strategies are listed at the back of the program in, on pages uh, 227 and 228. But yeah, the main, uh, the main definition of the interaction is that it's a joint construction um, through the negotiation of meaning and through contributing. So I put a little definition of the negotiation of meaning at the end of this um, presentation, but it's basically how the two or the, the individuals in this uh, interaction come to a joint understanding and the various strategies that they can use. Oh, so there, that's what I, that's how I classified them. But uh, I see that everyone had come up with the uh, a similar uh, consensus here. Uh, so I took some uh, strategies because I think it's clear that we understand what this is, but getting our students to understand it and to interact is a whole different question. I'm sure you'll agree with me. So I took some uh, tips and tricks from various sources. Um, some are from the um, program, some are from the correction and evaluation guide, and some are from two websites that I found, and I put the links at the end of this presentation. So uh, I think uh, you're probably familiar with all of them. Um, Perhaps, uh, so rephrasing is paraphrasing and taking what the other person had said and um, putting it uh, in your own words, simplifying something, and conversation enhancers, those are um, what that refers to are uh, responses to a comment like, wow, really interesting, you, uh, or you can ask questions, uh, is that so? And I have some examples for you. Uh, I thought it would be fun if we could listen to some examples of my students and we can either identify what strategies they have used to interact or what strategies we would suggest to them to get them to interact. So we'll start with the first one here. Good, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good. So if you're ready, can you tell me the story that you read, please? Yes. Oh, sorry, I apologize. I forgot to mention, this is a student doing um, ANG 4102 stories, and she's doing the, um, the uh, learning uh, situation that makes me think of. So it's telling an anecdote related to the story she did in the previous activity. Um, my story is, is uh, truly true and is very creepy. My story, it is passed in the 50 years ago okay. at Las Vegas for several months during the night. Mm -hmm. The story is Max, of a young boy of 22 years. Max coming to Las Vegas for organize a honeymoon for a good friend. During stay at Las Vegas, Max does say that he could in benefit for explore that place and maybe same meet to choose in one of his art. First, he's meet a few girls and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. um, until today, or his life will become become a worse nightmare. Okay. Why is that? The girl admit at first all that is in a way inexplicable. Interesting. Is he dangerous? No. Oh, okay, carry on. Max didn't understand anything anymore. Uh, the police accused Max uh, to have killing all this girl. Yeah, I would agree with that idea. The story ends when the hotel called the police for report suspicious smell mm -hmm. coming from one of their hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. Max is, and the police di discover uh, all this girl body were hi hiding in all this hotel room. Wow. Yeah. The conclusion for a story. Um, is Max will always be more careful in the future and the hotel has clo is closed. That's a very interesting story. Thank you. Is it a true story? 
No, it's a legend. It's a legend. Okay. Yeah. So, do you know what happened to the friend? He was organizing a honeymoon. Yeah. For his friend, did the friend find out about the bodies? No. No. Okay. Uh, the first time you heard this story, how did you react? What were your emotions? For this? Yeah. Normal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Normal. It's the lesion, so. Okay. So, were there any parts that surprised you? Both. Okay. Do you like the story? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me how does it connect to the story that you read? Um, honeymoon. It's Las Vegas. And it's a mystery yeah. for uh, for a buddy. Exactly. Yeah, that's probably the biggest. And is the night. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Those, yeah. Are, those are good connections. Okay, so um, anyone want to comment? Uh, interaction strategies that they heard or if this were your student, what would be the next uh, suggestion that you would uh, offer to your student to help her interact more? So Caroline is saying, how would you change the story? So you, you would ask that question. <sighs> what you don't what you don't know about this student, seeing as I had her in class, is it was really hard for her and she translated sentence by sentence. Um, yeah, she worked really hard at that. Uh, it's, it's, it wasn't easy for her. Yeah, yeah, Janet says uh, she ignored my reactions. Yeah, I, uh, I said, why is that? She just barreled on. So that's, uh, that's something to, um, to help the student uh, to understand that it's a flexible discussion. Um, so telling a story tends to be uni unidirectional. And at the end, her, her answers to my questions, yes, no, or just the minimum. Uh, how many times did I practice telling stories? Or did she, the student, oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> okay, hold on here. Because she didn't understand their, my reactions. Uh, I'm, I'm also thinking maybe she didn't hear me because she was so focused on telling the story because it was so difficult for her. Um, how many times did I practice the student? Uh, before that, she had... Uh, I would say not often. I mean, uh, in her real life, telling a story in English probably never comes up, but she had already done the um, a, a learning situation called uh, Tell Me a Strange Story, and then she had done uh, That Makes Me Think Of, or there's another one right before that that's linked to it. It's where you read a story and tell it back. So that it's not her first time in class, but I don't think it was often that she has done it. So other other ways to um, to uh, ask or to suggest would be to ask if it had happened to her, what her reaction would have been, things like that. Uh, yeah. So uh, definitely, I agree. Those are all different uh, strategies. I I would work on just a few with her because um, it was uh, so hard for her. So I have another example for you. I have a kind of a before and after. So Eric says here, when a student's having a hard time retelling stories, do you provide them with some kind of structure? Uh, in For me personally, they have the story organizers. Um, so she uses those to organize her introduction and her ideas. Um, I, For her, because she struggles with language to explain a story in English, she keeps trying to express her ideas, I'm, I'm trying to guide her more into using, simplifying her choice of story with the language that she knows because it will reduce the amount of burden that she has to find words and look them up and things like that. 
um, for now, I'd like to let my students try it on their own and if the process isn't working, then we revisit with a conversation. But I mean, every teacher has their, their own approach and every student is different as well. So that's the structure I use. So there's the organizers plus um, there's some choice involved in, in letting them try it on their own. Um, um, yep, Sylvie, uh, Sylvie shares that uh, students do have trouble expressing how they feel. Uh, absolutely, uh, it's their second, sometimes their third language. It's not an easy thing and it takes practice and uh, that's what we're there for. Uh, great, so I have um, uh, another example. It's kind of a before and after with a different uh, kind of strategy. It's with the uh, learning situation about giving advice. It's 5102, the first gift advice. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but if, if you want the, like to listen to the whole audio file, oh, I'm, I'm actually going to ask Janet if she would put them on our Padlet and you just feel free to contact one of us for the link. So sorry to put you on the spot there, Janet. Uh, so we'll just start this one. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good, are you? I'm okay. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm, 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 I need to buy a gift. So, uh, what do you suggest? Um, I have a lot, lot lots of suggestions. Perfect. <coughs> I know you you just date just you just date uh, you just started dating someone a few weeks ago. That's true. His birthday is coming. Yeah. And you don't know that gift to give. I have thought of ideas, but every time I don't like my idea. Yeah. I have a few ideas for you. Oh, please, I'm open. I think it would be a good idea if you get personal, give personalism so that you listen to them, look to your partner interest, interest but small. So in that one, you hear him giving the context, which is good. Um, but again, that was a, a discussion we had to have. I showed him the um, instructional rubric and that for participation, if he can uh, share the context, that will help. Um, but then we talked about advice. And in real life, I guess he doesn't give advice. But I, I asked him, well, don't people usually ask questions when they want to give advice? They want to know what you've done or haven't you done? So we had that conversation and just notice the difference. And again, I won't play the whole audio, but notice how the approach, his strategies are different. Hi, Jean-Claude. How are I'm you? I'm good. good. Than you. I, I'm good, but I'm a little anxious. I, I need to buy a gift for this guy that I'm dating. Oh, you, you just come, you, do you just, uh, no. That, no. Prendre une pause. Du, utilise les communications, les stratégies. Uh, just one minute, please. Et reprends ton idée. Ok. Um, you know, you, I know you, you just yeah. started dating. Yeah, it's been, I think, uh, three weeks, maybe. Three weeks? Oh. Yeah. And his birthday is coming soon? Yeah. Oh, you don't know how, what to give? No, I've thought of ideas, but after... Every idea, I don't like it. Mm. Help! <laughs> yes. The first one is pay attention. Take time and check out his Facebook and early text for the match on the fire team. What a great idea. So, what did you think? It's quite the difference, huh? The, the other thing I wanted to draw your attention to in um, in that particular audio, it's a thing in the uh, common uh, European framework that they call communication repair. And in the website link at the end of this presentation, where they have uh, they have some strategies for um, uh, enhancing a, an, an interaction. Um, one of them is is they say don't accept the answer I don't know. Well, in this case similar to that uh, strategy, I didn't accept that perfectionism, if I can't do it perfectly, I want to try it again. Because we all know in real life, when you communicate in your second or third language, 
doesn't always come out perfectly, but there are strategies we can use such as, could you just give me a moment to think, think it through or I'm looking for my words. So I just did that right there on the spot. And as you can hear, uh, it allowed him to realize, oh, I don't need to do this perfectly. I can just take a minute and continue. Um, so that was a, a another thing that I, and I'm sure you've all uh, had to have that speech as well, where the student believes they have to speak English perfectly, and we encourage uh, to that they do their best in the use communication strategies to help the process. Um, so that was the um, the other little uh, the other little uh, idea there. Yeah, and, and Eric uh, says that uh, it is good to do it on the spot. Um, definitely in class, that way when they um, need it, they ha they've already practiced them. Uh, so one of the other suggestions that I thought were really great in this uh, website that, that's listed at the back of this presentation is uh, modeling what a good uh, or an ideal uh, interaction is like. So my next example, um, this student, uh, I hope you'll agree with me, has modeled these uh, conversation enhancers, replying to my comments or questions, I would say almost to a professional level. So it's, it's quite enjoyable to listen to. And I'm in my KWL, one of the things that I wrote was, I need to collect more student examples. So when a student doesn't really know what to do, it's helpful if they have another example to listen to. So for 5102, this is one that I play for my students. And my students have given permission to use these. So if you want to use these for your students as well, please feel free. Uh, this is for the 5102 cyberbullying, social media and cyberbullying learning situation. Listen to the advice that he gives me. Francis, hi, thank you for meeting me for coffee. I, I understand you got my voicemail message. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need your help. I'm in a very serious situation. That's what I heard. <clears throat> so, um, uh, I, I got a lot of solution for you. Oh, wonderful. That's why I called you. Uh, one easy way to get away of a cyberbullying is to block the bully, the your friend, mm -hmm. your friend. <laughs> okay. You ignore the bully, and you read all of the evidence, like the personal information, um, so nobody can uh, can send you mean stuff. May I just to make sure I understand you? So, online, on my social media pages, delete my personal information. Yes. Okay. And also keep track um, uh, of the bully, uh, of your f friend, mm -hmm. s <clears throat> by screenshot the, the online messages, oh. and report this report this to the school administrator, like someone you trust, like a teacher, hmm. maybe. Well, that's smart. Okay. Uh, also, <clears throat> you can. Um, with the mean uh, messages that other person sent you, you can uh, report report that to the local police because <clears throat> because there's criminal offenses as well. I so I really think you should uh, you should talk to them because that this is really serious issues. I did not know it was criminal. That's that's interesting. It's considered as a threat. Oh. Uh, so, is a criminal offenses. That's good to know. <clears throat> uh, if you, if you're shy about this, you can send an on, an, an anonymous letters to the teacher, <clears throat> uh, and uh, that teacher can act mm -hmm. and help you, and uh, you can get out easily of the cyberbullying. I hope so. I will tell you, I'm I'm not shy to talk to my teacher. I just did not think of that idea. It's a good one. Um, also, yeah, technology can help. There's online tool application. This is very helpful for you to um, get all the cyberbullying because it, it gives you resources to help you get out of it. 
What do you mean by to get out of it? Out of the cyberbullying. Oh, it's an online tool. Yes. Okay. Do you know the name of it, or you just read about it? I just read about it okay. because a friend told me about it. So you uh, asked your friend for help for me. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Yes, indeed. Thank you, good friend. You're welcome. Any other? Okay. Um, I don't want to interrupt. Are Are you finished? No. No. Please continue. <clears throat> uh, about what I said about blocking and ignore the bullying. Yeah. Um, I heard a story from a friend. Um, <clears throat> it was a uh, his cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, she was cyberbullying by someone. She blocked the bully of all of her social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, <clears throat> uh, Tumblr, Kick, etc. And uh, <clears throat> about a month, uh, she <clears throat> uh, she wasn't uh, being uh, bullied anymore. Oh, that's good. That's wonderful. So yes, it's a possibility for me. Okay, sorry, we uh, we're running out of time, so uh, I won't play um, the entire file. But um, particularly when I asked about, he had consulted his friend for me. That uh, was a genuine, um, unrehearsed uh, interaction. So uh, I I really enjoyed his uh, interactive ability there. Um, and he replied to most of my comments. Um, he was very good at, at it. Um, uh, thank you, Eric. I am uh, very happy to that that you all came. Um, if you would like to take a moment, I know you're all busy, to fill out the KWL if you with what you've learned or if you have learned something at the end, I would be curious to see it. If you have ideas you would like to see in future webinars, please feel free to contact me. This one will be online afterwards, except for the portions where we uh, talked about exams. And the next webinar will be in January. You will receive an email. Um, Comments? Yes, Eric, quick question. Uh, Okay, Eric would like to know, do people use a textbook for their course material, yes or no? And I imagine um, which ones which ones do they use for 5102 he would like to know Anik has a question so eric some answers uh janet does not use books for secondary three to five neither do i uh Anik says they use connecting doors for secondary five uh, Annex question, is the ministry planning to do new exams for 4101? Okay, well, I think we'll finish with Eric's question here. Uh, Eric, but students seem to find that they do too much for the exam that they do. Okay, Caroline says connecting doors, but they don't have the audio transcript for the uh, learning 5102 learning situation to prepare the student for the exam. Sorry, Caroline, could you explain that a little bit? Okay, Carolina Carolina is saying um, in the 5102 exam, they have to listen to an audio and uh, take information from it. So in a learning situation, they remove the audio transcript. Okay, could you, Caroline, could you please, uh, could you please put your question in? Um, So uh, Eric Martin says he's more and more inclined to drop using books. He's worked with Connecting Doors for 5101 and now he prepares his own material. Thank you. Um, okay. So, Carolyn, I'll, if I could, I'll ask if you could. Uh, okay, here's your question again. And we also have time to make sure they can listen and prepare in 60 minutes. Oh, okay. So I'm not. Carolyn, again, I apologize. I'm not really sure what your question is. But getting back to the 4101, uh, if you have received the communique from uh, Mano Frenet, the info letter that she sent, in there she explains the 4101 that, that they're working on um, new exams. Yes, 
so you're saying that within during class you would give the students the same time constraints as the exam to make sure that they're able to do all of the the tasks like listening and preparing to interact um, yes absolutely and you give them 30 minutes to understand the audio oh yes okay I understand okay question from Sylvie do you know if we will have new exams soon and evaluation grids I can say that they are priorities um, for the ministry um, as to when I do not know and I, I apologize I, I have no information um, as to exact dates so I'll just give you a few more minutes in case if anyone has questions please again feel free okay uh, oral interactions with your students do you give them feedback <coughs> excuse me on their pronunciation strategies at the end of the interaction <coughs> excuse me again absolutely um, what I do with my group is I take the instructional grids and I ask them to do a self-evaluation so we listen to the recording together and I do the self-evaluation I explain the criteria and ask them to evaluate where they are and then I show them according to my judgment where I believe they are and then we talk about strategy so uh, it can include anything and everything including pronunciation participation uh, all of the evaluation criteria for each students it, it's different because they all have different strengths and different weaknesses uh, so Martin would like to know, Martin Pierre, sorry, would like to know if it's the highest priority. I would have to say, if you could refer back to the info letter that uh, Mano sent I, to be sure which priority she lists when. It's also on the CCB DBE website under the news section. Terry uh, pasted a copy of the info letter there. And Anik, yes, you're very welcome. Thank you to listen to a written text. Danielle, okay, Danielle says to listen to a written text to hear how words are pronounced. Try the extension click to speech. Okay, great. So that looks like a neat uh, resource. It's a great one, Lauren. Pardon it's me? It's real fun. It's real fun. It's precise. Um, works, works in French as well as in English. Uh, I haven't tried it in German, but I, I think it would as well. Uh, quite interesting. You simply go on Google extension uh, on Google and you uh, you ask click to speak and they will explain you how to get it on your Google well, server. So it's a great thing. So the, 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 the students can really hear how to pronounce. And you don't have to give much time for that. They do it by themselves. Something worth uh, looking into. I think those kinds of tools they help the student to be. I think those kinds of tools they help the student to be anonymous. Um, some more questions from Anik. If they do not interact that much, where do you evaluate them on the rubrics? So let's uh, let's uh, open up the floor, and if anyone would like to share where they would evaluate that student. So participation. I have a rubric right here. So interaction. This is the 4102. Let's look at the 5101 grid. Um, so uh, I'm welcome. Uh, I, I welcome comments, but uh, for myself, uh, interaction. Uh, for me, I would evaluate that under C1.1 participates in oral interaction. So I uh, don't have my digital copy handy here, but I'm going to just do this homemade um, holding up the paper in front of the camera. That's where I would evaluate it, um, but please feel free to, uh, to comment. Okay, great. And thank you for the, the link. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, I will thank you very much for participating and I look forward to seeing you online in January.